How to use containers in Arctos without barcodes. So while the container feature in Arctos is intended for use with barcoded objects and storage furniture, barcodes aren't necessary to utilize object tracking. So what you'll do instead is essentially create your own barcode and label system, but without the physical QR code. So for instance, here at CU, we track amphibian and reptile specimens at the jar level. And so we've assigned all of our storage units, all of our shelves with unique identifiers, as well as each jar. So if you look at this little inset on our label, you'll see that this jar has a unique ID. And therefore, all of the snakes within the jar have catalog numbers that can be linked with this ID. So if we look at this in Arctos, I'll call up um, the barcode for our building, which I've just created a, a simple code with our institution underscore and our building number. So I'll search for that and out of the universe appears our building. And if I double click on that, I'll then see all the rooms that I've set up inside the building. And so we're interested in snakes today. So we'll go into the snake room and then you'll see each shelving unit, which we refer to as bays. I can then go ahead and cl click bay and tunnel down and see the shelves of each bay, click on a shelf, and that will list all the jars contained by that shelf. And then of course, the, the smallest unit uh, will be our jar. So this jar only has one specimen in it. We'll see if there's any jars with multiple. There's a few there, yeah. And so I can look at my catalog records associated with the jar this way. I can also click on this folder and see my nested hierarchy and just click on this link to call up my catalog numbers. And so then I can just easily navigate to each record individually. And you'll see that same object tracking associated with the part table. So here I have my, um, my whole organism and here is the path of that container tree. I can also view it hierarchically like so. And so something that's nice about this system is not only can I see what jars are on what shelf, but I can really easily call up what are all the snakes in this entire shelving unit and look at them all in aggregate. So there's 120 snakes associated with this one shelving unit, which can be really helpful for moving collections um, and inventory purposes. And so how to set up a system like this at your institution would be, the first thing you're going to do is create some sort of barcode system. And so to do that, you'll go to manage data, object tracking, and you're going to create container series. And so this takes you to the form where you would actually bulk load barcodes, but the very first time you're actually going to claim barcodes. And we do that to ensure that you're not duplicating numbers that are in use by other collections because we are in a shared data environment. And so here we have the form that lists every institution and the barcode series that they're using. So you'll see in this column, the text of all the barcodes in use. Here's the SQL code to create that text format, the institution that's using it, and any notes about um, what those barcodes might be used for. And so, you know, if you've never used SQL, the easiest thing to do is actually kind of just scroll through this list and see if any institution is using a format that you might want to use for your own barcodes. And so if I see, oh, here at Alaska, they are using just a simple institution and barcode number, I can actually just go ahead and grab this code, copy it, and then replace with my own institution code and um, call it a day. If you find this intimidating or don't wanna do that or want help, you can go ahead and just click and file an issue and Dusty our program or someone else might get you up and running and set up barcodes. And the, the great news is if you are kind of playing around with SQL for the first time, 
you can just go ahead and test that your format is correct. So I can go ahead and just, I'll grab one of my jar numbers, say I think I've got the format correct. I can just test that out here and you'll see the status change. So you'll see my format is my institution code, the word jar and a number. And you'll see, of course, if I test this, it's gonna fail at any other institution because I'm using UCM, which is our own institution. Um, but it is passing where I've indicated the format that I want. So once I've set up that series, then I can go ahead and create the actual containers. And so I can do that one at a time, which might take a while. You'll get this, um, <laughs> you'll get this message, but you can go ahead and use this system if you're kind of creating just a small amount of containers. You'll go ahead and just grab whatever container type and there are many options and in our case we're using jars and shelves and bays uh, you can add dimensions if you'd like any sort of description or remarks your institution and then what we call a label and so you'll you'll need to create sort of this dummy bar, bar, barcode um, as an essential piece to this system because that is necessary when you're entering catalog records, you'll have to indicate the object tracking by using the barcode. The label can be anything. You could really call this, you could write this all out. You could call it snake jar 4820. You could really name it anything, but it's kind of the more human legible um, label. And, you know, this comes more into play when you have a QR code that's really not legible as a barcode um, and this just helps your staff kind of translate that so those are the two fields that will be essential to creating your containers so this is the one-off form you can also do this as a bulk loader so for instance here is a bulk loader i've created and so it's going to have these same fields so my acronym my container type here's the barcodes in my case, the barcodes and labels are pretty similar. However, I do have other collections that use jars. So for instance, fish collections. So if I were to be bulk loading my fish, I might have my barcodes would look pretty similar. However, my labels will now say fish. We tend to add uh, a description of the jar volume and then remarks. And so in our case, often um, this is sort of inventory remarks at the jar level. So <laughs> for herps, we often find a lot of loose tails that we can't associate with any specific catalog number. So we'll note that here. And I can go ahead and push this in and create hundreds of jars all at once. Once you have created all of your containers, then you can start putting things in them. So most often that's going to be your cataloged objects or specimens. And so again, you can do either a, um, a one-off and so you'll do that through object tracking and putting things into containers. So in this case, if I use this form, I could say, I'm gonna put this herp catalog number, I'll just say one, two, three, four. You'll wanna indicate your part name because in this case, herp one, two, three, four is just a whole organism. So I only have one option, but if this herp had a skull extracted or tissue samples, I'm gonna have a list of parts that I wanna select. And so you wanna make sure you're selecting the correct part to go into the preferred container. You can select um, another part if, if multiple things are going into the same container and then your parent container type. So for, so for us, it would be a jar. I'm putting a specimen into a jar and then I'm gonna indicate that barcode and then I'll say move it. Um, there is a way to do this in bulk and I've set up my bulk loader here. So similar fields, you'll see my, um, my catalog numbers, the part name that's going into that jar the type of container and the barcode associated with that container. So in this way, I can load thousands of specimens all at once. And that's what we do when we we do our inventory and spreadsheets, and then we go ahead and bulk load all of those specimens into their corresponding jars. And then you'll want to build out your container hierarchy and nest your jars onto shelves, your shelves onto bays, your bays into rooms, etc. 
And so to do this, again, there's a one-off method. So if I go to Manage Data, Object Tracking, Batch Scan, you'll see I'll just indicate the parent barcode. So if I've already created my jars, I'm going to indicate which shelf I want those to go on. So I'll put the barcode of my shelf, and then I can put all of the barcodes for my jar in these fields. And you can see that they're set up for, of course, scanning QR codes. But a better way, probably more efficient to do this if you're not actually scanning physical barcodes is to set up a, a bulk loader. And so if I go to one, it's a simple two column. What's the barcode and what parent container? So what parent is going to house that child barcode? So in this case, here's my shelves and here are the jars that I want to place on those shelves. And so hopefully this gives you a good overview of containers. One thing that I didn't mention that I'll show you is um, you can create container environments and, and track things that way. So if I go into one of my jars, you'll see that there's this option to add different environmental parameters. And so there's lots of handy things that you might be monitoring like ethanol concentration or relative humidity in your rooms. And so you can enter these values and save. And so then you'll create this environmental history. So you can see here that this jar, the ethanol concentration was checked and you'll see it's at 68% and a new lid was applied and it's telling me the time, the timestamp and the Arctos user who did that check. So that's a really handy thing that you can do to monitor your collections over time. Thanks.